Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for March 6, 2021, Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern. When we encounter an obstacle, know that it is your guide, your soul asks for it to help awaken you to discovering the divine being you already are. So embrace each obstacle with an open heart, and you'll find a deeper freedom that blossoms within. Challenges are the most sacred blessings in disguise. If we didn't have any, how boring would it be? There was a guy a long time ago, maybe some of you remember him, his name was Leo Biscaglia, he wrote a book, maybe a few, and uh, he was on a lot of talk shows at the time. And he believed in, in hugging people. He'd go up and hug strangers. And actually, there's, there's some steps to experiencing the ultimate hug. It's important interaction. A lot of us are, are really withdrawn or are fearful of physical contact, misinterpreted. Um, I mean, if you went up, if a woman went up and, up <clears throat> and hugged a complete stranger, probably not a good idea because of the direction and, and, and attitude that we have of ourselves. And, how we've been extracted through external, distracted through external authority. Whatsoever you come across, whatsoever you come across is God. You, the people you love, the people you hate, are all manifestations of God. The moment one recognizes that all as one, love arises on its own accord, Osho. We have these social rules. Some of us will decide to break free or to leave those social rules, open our hearts to embracing everyone that you meet with a big warm hug. You may notice that something dramatic and deep can shift within you, and the life you once lived, which felt separate and distant from others, can soon become warm, fearless, and healing. You can stop feeling lonely because we, we begin to form new relationships and connections that were based on a warmth that was beyond all social fear. Now, what you, you may find that's interesting is that in a short period of time, you can retrain all these people to instantly open their arms and give you a hug whenever you would meet them again. It can become an automatic that we would embrace and this deepens our trust for each other and for life. And soon your entire world can be surrounded with meeting warm spirited friends who instantly opened their hearts and smiles upon first sight could be the very first time in your life that you would feel that your heart had a home inside of every person in your life. So you become, you, you begin to become a, a hugaholic and a practice that requires a delicate, a delicate balance of giving and receiving love. It honors where people are at and their ability to let love in and yet lives under a very special and rebellious assumption that most of society needs to hug each other more frequently. This doesn't mean that you're running up to embrace every single person you see on the street, although it may be recommended seeing what happens just by making a free, you know, free hugs sign and walking down the street as, as these beautiful brave souls have done and have done. People have done that. They put a sign or a T-shirt 
free hugs. Free hug booth. So it takes, you know, it's interesting because if you, if you ask people to do that, they probably look at you like you're absolutely out of your mind. That, you know, you, you, you invite yourself to create throughout your week a deeper, longer held hugs that contain a natural heart opening effect. Have you ever, have you ever hugged somebody, you know, maybe in a social event and you come and greet somebody and it's like a chest bump almost. It's just, you know, you keep your body out from hugging the other person. So it's just like, you know, a little, you know, little hug type thing. It's not a full body hug because we're so tied up with fear. Oh, you know, maybe they'll get the wrong impression. Oh, you know, uh, you know. So we we're conditioned, we're conditioned not to love one another. So it's very, it's, and we're not talking about sexual love. We're talking about God love. So we 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 all crave connection, okay? And since we've had this, whatever you want to call it, this scam, this crime perpetrated on the civilization of the planet, this C-19, this cold. So we've had a lot of people that have been separated. And then some people actually believe that it's illegal to hug and connect closely with others. You get to a point where who's the boss? Right? Who is the boss? I'm not talking about anger. I'm not talking about frustration or fear. I'm talking about heart-mindedness. Who re- ask yourself, who's the boss? And you'll get a deep, resounding you are through your heart-mind. And you begin to realize that no one, no thing controls you never will the only way that happens is if you allow it that's it and more than ever people on this planet need a big body hug genuine we allow these ridiculous social rules to dictate to your social well-being. And you get to the point where the God within finally just says, haven't you had enough of this? Haven't you just had enough of it? You want to hug somebody, you hug somebody. You want to sit next to somebody, you sit next to somebody. And it is actually, this, it it endures this fear and it stops everyone from connecting in acts of love. Now that's understandable, isn't it? When you have lower dark matter survival matter frequencies ruling and running the planet for so very long, pretty obvious. Separation, dissension, irritation, frustration, anger. So to bring to bring this world back on the even better than the old social norm, we do it collectively on an individual level. So we're all connected. We're all part of the collective consciousness. And this is what's so funny. It, it is funny. You got to laugh about it. Love is our true essence. No matter how much you want to argue with yourself. A lot of times we just forget about it. We think that the only way we experience love is when we interact with somebody else. Love has no limitations of caste, religion, race, or nationality. Age differences. We are all beads strung together on the same thread of love. And to awaken this unity and to spread to others the love that is our inherent nature. It's our actual natural state of being. It is the true goal 
of this human life, this mankind life. Amache, the hugging saint, said that. Love is our true essence. Love has no limitations of caste, religion, race, or nationality. We are all beads strung together on the same thread of love. To awaken this unity and to spread to others the love that is our inherent nature is the true goal of this human life. Amachi, the hugging saint. There was a saint. His name was Amachi. Look him up. He was called the hugging saint. There are many sacred resources hidden inside each and every one of us that are not so easily accessed. Deep healing connections with the highest states of consciousness are truly, literally just moments away. But however, for each of us to find these inner gold mines takes the willingness to do some digging. You must choose to open yourself up and let go of the old trenches you've been digging around in to discover a new treasure. To give and receive the ultimate hug to the opposite sex or same sex, you must understand that the very heart-to-heart meeting you have is a short yet divine opportunity for each person to relax, rest, and dive deep within themselves. The hug may last three seconds, three minutes, or maybe become horizontal and become a three-hour cuddle. Anything is possible. It all depends on your intention. how open your heart is and the level bodily communication you create. The secret is not being attached to anyone, any outcome, and making every embrace genuine, meaningful to your heart, which is truly open and loving their heart. The ultimate hug begins with the ultimate intention, which is an embrace from both sides that becomes a gateway to entering the divine. It's like imagining you were going to step into the heart of God, what would that feel like? When you step into the sacred place inside yourself, the other person will feel the shift in vibration. Through intentional communication with your heart, your heart opening practice with others will soon become a joyful habit that everyone looks forward to and will soon manifest into the most amazing, joyful life everyone could possibly live so here's four steps that you might want to exercise in the ultimate hug look people in the eyes when you meet them you ever notice does it ever bother you uh you know maybe you kind of go why aren't how come they don't want to look at me when i'm talking why are they looking all over the place down and to the side you know Look people in the eyes when you meet them. Smile and give a first initial, I appreciate you. Uh, It's an I appreciate you greeting just from your eyes. The eyes are the windows, as we know, to the soul. So let the love come through them. Love the other person, not because you should, but because they are lovable, need love, and available for receiving love. Make this about giving love from your soul and also receiving any love you need to. This is not about trying to get them to give love back to you, yet be open to that when it does occur. Hugging is about intimacy and creating a connection with human beings that breaks through all your fears, walls, and limitations. Step two. Allow your chest to physically touch the other's chest. Embrace their body in the most gentle, slow, and loving manner that is deeply welcoming them into your heart. When the other embraces you, rest into the other person's heart. Surrender any walls or fears you have and melt for a few moments into the other's body. Take a deep breath together with the person and exhale together. Ask them to breathe with you if they are open to it. 
Allow your heart to open and connect with the heart and the being of the other soul. And step three, remain centered in your body as you embrace and surrender into the other. This is not about giving your heart away to the other person. They already have a heart, so what would they need a second heart for? Enjoy the process of finding the balanced point and the very center of yourself in this experience. It may become erotic or exotic if you're attached to the other. Yet allow yourself to remain connected to your center, your heart, your truth in essence. Merge, yet remain centered in the merging. It can be very easy to get lost in the other or to remain distant, separate, and in control. Find the middle path when you can breathe with them and be in their energy field and deeply rooted and centered in your essence at the same time. And finally, when your bodies physically meet, find a level of full bodily embrace that feels enjoyable, healing, and healthy, and relaxing for everyone involved. Some people will keep their pelvis sex center pulled back so as not to get too close, while others may push into you. You just find the middle ground where you're not resisting nor pushing, yet meeting them with the heart, belly, and hips evenly. It takes practice, yet this is about learning how to let go of layers of social fears and sexual inhibitions we didn't even know we had. To reach the more advanced levels of hugging, you may need to talk openly about these four steps in detail with your friend or partner. Practice hugging many times a day and get comfortable. I know it sounds kind of strange, Get comfortable feeling of what a real juicy hug is like for you. Feel the most gentle love for yourself. Breathe in this love now. The very moment before you embrace, close your eyes and imagine exploring each new hug as if you were falling into the arms of God. It's as if you just arrived in heaven and are greeted by the angels. Feel as if you're coming home to the greatest love in the universe. Trust this experience each time you hug someone, and soon you will completely transcend all those old inhibitions and fears. Open your arms. Smile whenever you meet someone new. Don't even think twice about it. Just do it while you are genuinely smiling. Most people will just copy whatever you're doing and open their arms too because social rapport is embedded into our very core. Most people don't want to seem distant, cold, or closed down. So embrace them and love them as long as is comfortable for you and them. Try to make it a habit of placing a hand for a few moments on someone's shoulder or arm when talking to them. Notice how they respond with either softening or freezing up. The walls always want to melt, yet often are too afraid to know how. Think that each connection you have with everyone you meet is an opportunity to liberate fear, especially those who are cold, resistant, and truly need a hug. Whenever you first meet someone new, just open your arms wide and see how they respond. Maybe half of them will smile, open their arms, and embrace you. Don't have any expectations. This is a deeply transformative heart-opening practice that will change your entire life in more ways than you could possibly know. Another tip is to practice turning into your sensitivity, to know how long to hug the other until they feel you in a deep and meaningful way. Do not get too discouraged if you or your partner freak out and step away after the first few seconds. You may not be able to immediately find this ultimate cosmic hugging experience. It may take time before some people trust this feeling of being embraced with this deep eternal love. It can help to educate your community and even share this, 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 this understanding, this feeling, and this experience. Life's like a camera. Just focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from negatives 
And if things don't work out, just take another shot. Practice trust and letting go of fear. Most of us are in this fear hold. We, we, we kind of try to convince ourselves that we aren't. But you ever notice that you're afraid to touch people? You're afraid to hug people, strangers and stuff? It's, it's, it's unreal. One of the most challenging and rewarding things we can do on this planet is to learn how to face our fears and truly connect deeply with people. This means being able to engage freely with others on the deepest emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical levels. When you are connecting with others fearlessly in truly intimate, heart-opening ways, you open up new energies of love, lightness, and joy within yourself. This fresh, rejuvenated feeling offers the incentive to explore the deeper and more beautiful, mysterious aspects of your very spiritual nature. The easiest and fastest way, one of the easiest and fastest ways, you can shift out of any fearful head trip, is to take a deep breath, give yourself permission for others to see and feel the real you inside. And this is not always easy because it eludes the other to believe that they also need to do the same. But yet revealing that which cannot or should not be revealed often allows a deeper trust to come in. This trust is the most essential aspect of being a fully alive, spiritually awakened human being. And remember, you are not here just to survive the system and become an accepted member of society. You are here to celebrate this life, to dance, to sing, to play together, and to enjoy this amazing sensual body you have. In order to do this, you need to bring awareness to the fear-based system that has educated everyone to remain separated, isolated, on the phones, and lacking intimacy. Awareness brings about the ability to transcend. The more you're aware of this old programming, the easier it is to become and to go beyond it. More than ever, it is a strong feeling with many of us that in our hearts that we need to teach our children how to liberate ourselves from any fear of breaking any social distancing rule. These rules have been planted in such an old deep soil within everyone from generations ago. Back when you were a child, you were probably not aware of how deeply they were rooted in functioning and everybody around in everyday life. To be free from the generations of disconnection means we must consciously invite and re reconnection and imagine ourselves opening up to a new future that is healing, warm, and beautiful. Open your heart to the golden energy of love, hugging as a spiritual practice. You know, as a baby, you came into this world completely unrestricted, unguarded, unafraid of being intimate with others. You were a bubble of bliss. Your heart was naturally open, fearless, and un just absolutely deep, eternal loving. You were constantly merging with everyone and everything you met. Giving and receiving touch was, a nat was as natural as breathing. Then throughout your childhood, a tight grid of social rules was unconsciously implanted upon you. Now that you are a grown adult on the path of healing, personal growth, and self-realization, your job is to liberate yourself from every single limitation that has been imposed upon you. You are here to find freedom from every mental, emotional, social, physical, and spiritual person you're living in. You are here to grow beyond all these walls. Breaking free from limitation is how you experience freedom. These social rules are imperative to break free from as hugging does not hurt others yet only helps them to face their fear and become free from it. Yet this level of liberation that I'm speaking about is not just about going beyond the old C-19 social distancing laws. This freedom is much more evolved than that. This path is about finding freedom within yourself that is so enormous, so ecstatic, and full of aliveness that every social rule must bend and bow down to the path to greet you. If you're interested in knowing this, ask yourself, what are you waiting for? Your life is meant to be a juicy spiritual adventure overflowing with absolute aliveness. You are not here to just get by. 
survive or exist in a perpetual feeling of being separated, isolated, or avoiding touching other people. Human beings need gentle, warm, physical touch every single day to truly remain vibrant, happy, and healthy. It is vital and essential for your spiritual journey to be touched by others in order to welcome in a state of true mental, emotional, and physical health. The time that you have left here on earth is absolutely priceless, precious. It's not worth wasting a single day on feeling distant and separate from others. Imagine how your heart will feel over the next five years if you become, when you become devoted, to replacing every potential socially awkward and distant hello with a heartwarming hug. It's the heart that is the doorway to our soul and spiritual journey. Open it wide and the most amazing life will follow. Enlightenment begins with the moment, begins the moment when you are not and God is. It is a moment of absolute harmony. A window opens and you can see the whole sky. You are no more confined within the walls of your body and mind. A lightning, a lightning happens and old darkness disappears. Oh, shell. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing that we care to do, relax the body. You can do this over and over and over again until it becomes automatic. You imagine that? Why do we repeat this in every meditation? It's so that you become automatic with it. it you, re, you learn, you relax the body every chance you can get any moment, whatever you're doing. So you relax the body. You let go of all the things that you're gripping onto. Fear, anxiety, wonder, worry, stress, anger, frustration. Let it go. Does it serve you the greatest good? Does it relax you? Do you feel at ease with it? No. So you walk up to it. You don't you don't turn your back on it in hopes it goes away. You walk up to it, you give it a big hug, body, full body hug, and a kiss on the lips, love it, and watch what happens. It will no longer be there. It'll be gone, vaporize. Many of us will just, we ignore it. We just keep ignoring it, push it on our carpet or push it, push it in the closet. You know, it'll go away, go away. It keeps bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up. But when we turn and face it, Without any fear, we give it a big body hug and a kiss and love, it's gone. And your body will relax, head to toe. You'll feel it. You'll feel it come down over your head. Your shoulders will drop. Your face will not grimace or contort. And we'll just de-stress the body, head to toe. It's Like I say, it's like you just sit in an easy chair and you just... You just fall back in this chair. You just right into the God that you are. And you're completely still. And completely relaxed. No chatter, no noise. You move into the now. You're not doing anything. You just relax the body and you move into the now. You're in that big easy chair and you're just sunk right into the God that you are. And the now stills the ego, the mind, the subconscious mind. You actually step outside the mind. You're not in it anymore. You're watching it. Most of us are controlled by the mind and the ego. We're the slaves of them. Well, when you become self-discovering, you understand that you're the master over them. The only way you can do that is by staying in the now and stepping out of the mind and the ego. So you watch them. This is how you master them. They make great servants and horrible masters. And all that noise, all that chatter, all those thoughts, 60 plus thousand every 24 hours nonstop, it's gone. You're only focused on the space between heartbeats. 
You're only focused on the moment, moment to moment. You're not in a hurry. You're not being, you know, uh, uh, pressured by external authorities to hurry up, look into the future. You know, what are you going to do tomorrow? What are you doing next week? What about this and that? You're only in the moment. Because that's all you have is moment to moment. Whatever it is you may be doing, you focus on it. You're in it. Now, some of us, well, all of us go into the end of the past. We reminisce. We go over thoughts, feelings, and stuff that we've experienced maybe as long as 50 years ago. Who knows? But we don't stay there. Unfortunately, some of us stay there. It can become a very frustrating journey because it's like an elephant graveyard. You know, carcasses and bones and it's just all dead. It's over. It's not in the present. It's gone. So we can take that past. We bring it into a future that doesn't exist. We create that future from that past and we relive that past in that future. This is why a lot of people find themselves asking this one question. Why does it seem like I'm always ending up in the same place? No matter what I do, no matter what direction I go, I always find myself here. Why is that? That is why. So only let's go into a future that doesn't exist because you, you only create the future in the now. So we wander in, into a future that doesn't exist and we're saying what if and when and how. This is how we get so frustrated, so anxiety filled and so worried because we're constantly thinking and wondering and worrying about what isn't even there. We, 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 when and how and what if and, and, it's, it, and all that energy is futile. But the now calms everything. You're in a space, a void of complete silence. Now, how do you stay in the now? How do you, how do you stay in the now? You know, we all, these thoughts still come wandering in and we go off. You know, it's not a bad thing. We just kind of wander off in these different thoughts. Some of them, we, we don't even know why we're having them. So you focus on your breath. The breath is divine. It's divine positive energy. There isn't one negative about our breath at all. Zero. It focuses us. It relaxes us. It strengthens us. It sustains these bodies that hold the kingdom of God. So whenever you're, you wander off with these thoughts, consciously, no. Okay. So I'm wandering off. I'm aware of it. I'll focus on my breath. Only the breath. Only the breath you focus on. And when you do that, it's absolute guarantee you're in the now. Every single time. Now, you know, your, your body's relaxed. You're watching things. You're not judging. You're watching. And your body, you see your body totally relaxed in this easy chair. I mean, it's not moving in a, a smidgen. And you notice that through the center of it are these wheels of colored light. And the lights are so vibrant and, and, and um, undeniably lights, colors that you've never seen on this planet. Now, they're etheric. They're, they're connected to the spiritual realm, spiritual plane, to your physical. They're the conduits. They connect your biological to the spiritual. So if there becomes some kind of an obstacle between those two, you will have situations biologically in that body that you're in. If you cut off the gas line to a vehicle, what's going to happen? It's not going to run, is it? If you don't put oil in that engine and you run it, what's going to happen? It's going to freeze up. 
So you notice that the red wheel of light, and these are all flowers, you notice. They, they, they look like flowers, and each one of them has a different geometrical shape inside of them, and each one's a different flower. So the first one we look at is the root chakra, the red wheel of light, the Modhara, the, the, the um, energy vortex. And this deals with our survival. And our survival is career, money, mindset, sense of belonging. And it's blocked by fear. And we move to the orange whale of light, which deals with our pleasure. And it is blocked by guilt. And then to the golden yellow whale of light, which is the solar plexus chakra, the manapura. This deals with our willpower and is blocked by shame. And then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the heart chakra, the anahata. This is our love, relationships, and self-acceptance. It's blocked by grief. And the blue wheel of light, the vishuddha, the throat chakra. This is our self-expression. It's our communication. And this deals with truth. It's blocked by lies. And then the indigo wheel of light. This is the third eye chakra, the ajna. It's our intuition, sense of purpose, direction in this life. This deals with our insight. It's, it's blocked by illusion. And then we move to the violet wheel of light, the crown chakra, the sahasra. This is our connection to the divine, to the God source, the pure consciousness of which we are, cosmic energy. And it is blocked by ego attachment. How many times do we get ourselves caught up in our egos? Look at me. Look what I have. Look how much money I've got. Look at how much power I have. You see how it twists everything? and tries to separate us, which is really impossible, it's an illusion, from our God, our cosmic energy. So, in these, the center, as these, these seven energy vortexes, these chakra chakras, right at the center of our bodies, from our tailbone all the way to the tops of our heads, and this energy that's flowing through them, this God force, love light energy, we take our, our breath, our divine positive energy, and we join it with the God force love light energy. And we move everything all the way to the tops of our heads. It's like a fountain. It comes up over the head, back around to the spinal, tail, and then back up again. These two energies at the top of our head, we hold them just briefly. We are light, we are love, and we are God. And in that short period of time, we compress and condense them into pure liquid energy, and release them over our pineal glands. Now, our pineal glands are not fully functioning. They're not healthy. They're very important to us while we're in these physical forms. They connect us to all the particles of existence. Why wouldn't we want them to be healthy? So you see it. The, the pineal gland in your heart, mind, motion picture of which you're the director, the creator, the choreographer, the actors, the actor, everything. And however you view it, I view it as a rosebud, a green ball. And when I release this pure liquid energy over it, it immediately transforms instantaneously into this massive rose, multicolored petals, fully bloomed, and this wonderful fragrance, and it sends out this shimmering wave that just absorbs into me as if it's communicating or part of me. And I find that it is because a just a absolute deep eternal peace comes over me. And I discover that it isn't outside, it's from within me. And it is the most glorious deep peace you could ever experience. Everything drops away. All the outer world, all the distractions, 
everything fade out and you're in a space of deep eternal peace it's almost like you're floating you're actually in the sacredness of space we are consciously aware that we're of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal gratitude and these bodies that we're in our heart mind our ego mind our subconscious mind our our soul higher self spirit god source pure consciousness one all one and we are heaven literally on earth on this planet heaven on earth in every step we take literally we are creating paradise every single step we take we're creating paradise how can we not when we're consciously aware that we are the God pure consciousness perfect divineness and we shine our light outward we've learned to shine the light of the God that we are of the love deep eternal gratitude out upon everything all of our brothers and sisters awake asleep in between all life the highest supreme value in the universe flooding everyone everything eternally always so we have a planet earth Gaia Aria Europe and it glows it's a God planet and it's inhabited by billions of little gods all making up the one God we are part of the collective consciousness some of us are awake some of us are asleep some of us in between So we're communicating in this meditation with all those who are consciously awake. They know who and what they are to a certain degree. They know their love. They know their God. They know they're one with all of us. So we call out to all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, beneath earth, Agartha, all these civilizations, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation forming the circle of light liberation of this planet and they come in the billions and they are with us now consciously we call upon all light energy beings out there and all that there is ever has been ever will be ever beyond and forever yet only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest 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 eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation forming the circle of light complete liberation of this planet now they come in the Google plexus one Googleplex fills this entire universe. They come in trillions of Googleplexes from trillions of universes from every direction. And they are with us now consciously. We call upon all the off-worlders, galactics, celestials. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now in this meditation forming this circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet earth Gaia Aria. we're only familiar with a smidgen of them over a thousand travel through the solar system every single day trillions throughout the universes every single day the ones that we're somewhat familiar with the Pleiadians the Syrians the Arcturians the Andromedans the feline, the zeta reticuli, 
the Nords, the Greys, Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avian, and many, many, many more. They've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And they, in uncountable numbers, from every direction, are with us now, consciously. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation of forming the circle of light. And they come into billions, and they are with us now, consciously. We call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms, on, in, above, and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Now they are in the trillions. Shapes, color, sizes, forms, configurations, which we've never seen before. Not even familiar with. And the ones that we are somewhat familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, wood, ether, mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, many, many, many more. And they come in the trillions, and they are with us now consciously. We're all gathered arm in arm, hand in hand, full compassion, non-negativity, non-ego, non-judgment, gentleness, kindness, tranquility, humbleness, generosity, joy, peace, bliss, benevolence, abundance, prosperity. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God for us, love, light, energy, is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We immediately form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia Aria. And this now, this light comes from our core, our essence, our God source, pure consciousness of that which we are. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of space. Take over a thousand billion suns in this solar system even to come close to its radiance. And we are flooding this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, eternally, always, with this deep, eternal love light energy. Flooding everyone, everything, all life, the highest supreme value of the universe, head to toe inside and out. See it, feel it through your heart and minds. Bathing all of us. The shimmering white light, pure, deep, eternal love and gratitude, deep, eternal peace. We begin to levitate, ascend above this planet. And as we do, we come into contact with this massive ocean of glitter. And these are little, we look and we see these little, tiny, perfectly edged mirrors reflecting all of us in trillions of vibrant colors, flashing everywhere, reflecting all of us as teachers, as students, learning, teaching, consciously and unconsciously. We immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is the column of light that reminds us all that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. 
This is the column of light that reminds each and every one of us of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that reminds each and every one of us that from head to toe, inside and out, perpetually, always, we are protected. This is the white fire from the God force love light energy of all of which we are. No entity, no demons, no possessions, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies can attach, impede, harm, disrupt, period, any of us, ever, ever, ever. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, consciously or unconsciously, through hate, greed, anger, fear, stress, anxiety, envy, you will, lower your, you will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. If you do decide to do this, you are met with the purple transmuting flame. This is a vial. This is the column of light that reminds us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance. Send them to pure consciousness. They're gone permanently. Then we're met with the violet ray. This is a column of light that reminds each and every single one of us that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring the highest of the highest high of deep eternal love and gratitude and deep eternal peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column of light that reminds each and every single one of us that we are the sun the sunlight, the sunset, the sunrise, the rain, the rainbows, the trees, the forest, all of the animals, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the snowfall, the soils, the sky, the clouds. We're everything. So the next time you're in awe of a sunset or a sunrise, of its beauty, you're in awe of you. You're the divineness. You're the beauty. You're the vista, the majesty. Always have been, always will be. Some of us, as we continue to ascend above the planet, step outside our physical form, float effortlessly above it, if we're carrying physical form. We come into full view of this massive crystalline light tower. It's larger than the solar system. If you look into the column of the tower, you see this oblong sphere. In the center is this massive golden white light, sparkling, shimmering, glittering. And surrounded are several rings of vibrantly colored shimmering light. And the golden white light ball is sending out waves of pure, deep, eternal love. And then we have gratitude from the rings coming in us. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, well-being, great wealth, abundance, prosperity, happiness, joy, bliss, tranquility, benevolence. And it's all reflections of who and what we are. We look at the top of this tower that we created and we have designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees eternally, always, flooding all of us head to toe inside and out with pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, and deep, eternal peace. I mean, 
endlessly. How can we not be lifting the vibrational field and frequency of the entire civilization in this planet? We are drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. The ocean is the drops and the drops are the ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's at center circle. We all created this sphere over three years ago. It holds almost 1,300 of our meditations in perpetual motion. The highest of intent, the purest of deep eternal love, gratitude, and peace. Flooding everything, all of us, head to toe, inside and out. This is why this fear can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And this is why it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. You feel, you feel and see through your heart mind. And you begin to understand that the more you practice trust and letting go of fear, you become freer and freer and more in deep peace. And all that externality, that outside world, vaporizes. And you discover that everything you've been searching for is within you. I'll join you in the meditation and return to closing.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. The sun shines down and its image reflects in a thousand different pots filled with water. The reflections are many, but they are each reflecting the same sun. Similarly, when we come to know who we truly are, we will see ourselves in all people. Amache. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Sunday, March 7th, 2021, 3 p.m. to continue our global guided meditation call.